So, I've roughly gone from negative pi to 5 pi-ish. That was just for the sake of drawing, not for the sake of solving. Okay. So you can see, from negative pi to 5 pi, the actual width that I've gone across is 6 pi, and so that's why I've got, you can see, three copies, basically, of the cosine graph. Okay. Now, let's start by saying, because x equals a half, again, I've chosen a nice, easy, exact value for you, what is the angle that's the first solution? It's pi on 3, right? Pi on 3. Which, if you have a look, if you've drawn your graph decently, you should be able to know, okay, my intercept is pi on 2. Pi on 3? Yeah, cool. I'm in the ballpark. Now, from there, I don't, I'm not going to fuss around with any more quadrants or anything like that. I'm just going to look at the graph and go from there. What's the nearest solution to pi on 3? The nearest one. The nearest one is the um, is the reflection, right? Now, the reason why, of course, is because cosine has what kind of symmetry? What function is it? Even. It's even. So if pi on 3 is a solution, then oh, negative pi on 3, you better believe, is also a solution, right? So you can see what's happening here. On either side of 0, x equals 0, I should say, I've got a pair of solutions, OK? Now, what happens when you have a look at these two guys? Well, having drawn so many copies of the graph, I hope you can see that these two solutions can get to these two oh. solutions taking advantage of the same trick we used over here, just with a different number. The period here was... <laughs> the period here was... Pi radians, so that's why I went pi radians, pi radians, pi radians. But the period here is two pi radians, as you just mentioned. It. So I'm going to take both of these guys and just go forward two pi radians. Does that make sense? So you can see here... Uh, we'll do this one because it's the positive case, which is easy. 2 pi is 6 pi on 3. So therefore, this will be 7 pi on 3. And this guy over here, again, I'm adding 6 pi on 3. Take away pi on 3. So that's 5 pi on 3. Okay? I want to point out. Remember I said to you, hey, look, this is 0. And then you go forwards and backwards. And then there's a pair. What's this point here? 2 pi, right? As in 6 pi on 3, of course, is the average of these two fractions. So there's 2 pi. Of course it is, because I got to these solutions by taking these two and moving forward how far? Two Answer, 2 pi. Okay. Well, I can go to get another pair of solutions in exactly the same way. There's 4 pi, right? If I go forwards, I'm going to get, what did I say? I'm adding 6 pi on 3. Right, so to speak, thir 13 pi on 3. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I did the one before. You did the other one, which is this guy, which is 11 pi on 3. Take that value there. So, what's happening here? Geometrically, something very similar, namely but the periodicity, but there's some crucial differences. Okay. Firstly, I can say, um, it doesn't happen every pi radians. Well, of course it doesn't because the, the period is different. So therefore, rather than saying n pi, which captures 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, I only want the even ones. I only want 0 pi, 2 pi, 4 pi, I guess I want 6 pi, 8 pi, and so on. So instead of writing n pi, I'm going to write 2 n pi. That will give me all of the even ones, right? And then from those even spots, I have to go forwards, I also have to go backwards. I've got to, I've got to do both, right? Because what I'm trying to do is capture every single solution out there. Not just one or two, I want all of them. So I want to go forwards, and I also want to go backwards. In this case, it's pi on 3. Okay? Okay? So notice what's similar and what's different. There's still this n business. I should say n is an integer for the same reason that it was before. Okay? But it's 2n pi, not n pi. Not for some arbitrary reason. It's because cosine has a different period, has a longer period. Then what's this plus minus about? What's that? What's that? It's yeah, it's because I want a pair. I want a pair every time. Whereas here, you're just getting one, one, one. Okay? So therefore, that was for cos x equals a half, right? What about for cos x equals anything, right? If I said, okay, again, get ready to draw a box. For cos x equals k, I'm going to say x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus what? Cos inverse. Yeah, good. That's where this pi on 3 came from. Pi on 3 is cos inverse of a half. Um, for integer values. Okay. Okay. Now, do all 
also want to point out, so far I've chosen nice easy values that are all positive, right? Suppose I went over here and I said, can you solve for me 10x equals negative 1 instead? Or could I, could I get you to solve cos x equals negative a half? Will our formulas still hold? Will they still work? Yeah. I think they will, right? Let's have a look at this case first, okay? If I was solving 10x equals negative 1, instead of going from n pi and going forward pi of 4, I'm just going to go n pi backwards pi of 4, which is exactly what tan inverse does, right? Tan inverse of negative 1, it has the right range. It's just going to hand you negative pi of 4, right? So the solution would be n pi minus pi of 4. In this case, what would happen? What would be different? What would be different? If I put um, negative a half instead of a half, what's the range of cos inverse this guy? What's the range? Think back. So we're doing our it's not to pi, right? So when you say um, cos inverse of negative a half, it's going to look down here. Um, what is that? That's going to be 2 pi on 3, I believe. Okay. So what you're going to have is 2 n pi plus or minus 2 pi on 3. You're going to go this way. You're still going to get a pair of solutions. Uh, here, you're going to go this way and you're still going to get a pair of solutions. Does that make sense? Yeah. 